Snipes, Stephen Dorff. You're one of them, aren't you? No, I'm something else. Blade. Welcome back to the 8th Annual Halloween Special. Tonight we're going to be talking about a film that you might not normally associate with this time of year, but I certainly do. Before Neo, Morpheus, and Trinity punched a bunch of people while wearing trench coats and sunglasses, before Wolverine fought Sabretooth on top of the Statue of Liberty, and before Spider-Man swung around New York City, Wesley Snipes killed a shit ton of fucking vampires in 1998 and it was awesome. Blade is a film that's gotten more respected over the years. Obviously, when it first came out, people enjoyed the movie. It was successful at the box office, and it spawned two sequels, one of which is actually good, Blade Trinity being a giant fucking garbage fire. But the film received pretty polarized reviews from critics. Motherfucker, are you out of your damn mind? To top it off, coming out in 1998, this film was released after the worst year for superhero films ever. Men in Black, of course, being the exception, but that certainly isn't a superhero film, and so Blade had everything to prove the following year. And this film got made because Wesley Snipes wanted to do it. So many view this film as the movie that launched the takeover of superhero movies but it feels completely different than what we have today. Today is a very episodic narrative that never seems to end. Blade is a film that is definitely not concerned with any of that. In fact, while making the film, they didn't even know if they were gonna be able to make a sequel or not. And over the years, a lot of people seem to have completely forgotten that Blade exists. Black Panther is often credited as Marvel's first black lead when Blade did it 20 years prior. Blade tells the tale of the Marvel Comics superhero who is known as a daywalker. He has all the strengths of a vampire, but none of the weaknesses. He can go out in the day, sun doesn't affect him, but he does have a thirst for blood. He's friends with Whistler, played by Chris Christopherson. He makes all of Blade's weaponry, so that on a nightly basis, he can kill a bunch of vampires. I haven't seen this movie in years. I knew I liked it. It's actually my favorite of the trilogy. For some people, that's two. One is my favorite, and I rewatched the film today, and it really holds up. There are some cheesy aspects to it. There's some dated CGI for sure. Steven Dorff's villain, Deacon Frost, he's definitely the weakest aspect of the movie, unfortunately. He's really hamming it up. And it's not that the film is supposed to be taken very seriously or anything. It's just that his portrayal of Deacon Frost felt very whiny. He felt kind of like a brat, like some rich kid who's lounging around at home dreaming about world domination. <laughs> Not a very compelling villain, especially when you see him next to Wesley Snipes and these two people are fighting. It just looks like no contest, like Snipes is going to fucking break him in half like a twig. You just don't really feel that intimidation factor, unfortunately. But besides that, I kind of love Blade. You often talk about perfect casting for comic book movies. You hear about Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, or Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, or Christopher Reeve as Superman, and yes, all three of those actors, it's hard to separate them from that character. I think that Wesley Snipes should be included in that group. He is perfect as Blade. It's hard to imagine someone else portraying him. I mean, Snipes was so dedicated to this role, he actually did press interviews in character. Playing a comic book character is the best of all worlds, because anything goes create a different voice, create a different look, different sound, different way of moving, with the talking. All the stuff very different from Wesley. I love Mahershala Ali, and I'm very excited to see what he does as the character, but this character could have been portrayed as a Punisher-type character, just a very cold, angry, vengeful person who never has any fun. But that's not the direction they took this character, and it works so well in the movie. <laughs> The opening club sequence with the blood sprinklers and Blade coming in there and just fucking tearing ass through all these vampires, the way they set that up is actually really clever because you follow some vampires who are sort of recruiting someone, a regular guy who thinks he's going to get to have sex tonight, and he's actually going to be food for a bunch of vampires, and you get to experience the entryway into the club through this guy. And you think that everything that's happening around him that's the horror. All these vampires that are covering themselves in blood and getting really excited to eat him, that's the scariest thing in the room until he crawls away and runs into Blade and you realize that he's actually the most intimidating thing in this club. It's a brilliant opening sequence that works really well and one of the reasons a lot of this movie still holds up is because most of the fight sequences 
were done in camera. Wesley Snipes doing incredible stunt work. His arms and legs are moving like fucking speeding trains. It's still really impressive and a blast to watch. Blade's friendship with Whistler is one of the film's highlights because there's this sort of macho, we don't talk about how much we love each other, but we love each other element going on there, which is in a lot of movies like this, but it's done really well here. Along the way, he meets a woman who he saves, who he introduces to the vampire world because she's about to be turned, and they have a way of keeping people from turning. If they're just about to turn into a vampire, they inject them with essence of garlic, and maybe that can keep it from happening. And that character becomes our guide through this world. We learn about his goals, what he's after, what he gets out of killing vampires, and the film is surprisingly more emotional than I remember it being. The score in this film is very good, and what I like about it is that Except for the opening and the finale fights, every single fight is not accompanied with drum and bass techno music. In fact, some of the fight sequences have very serious, somber music playing in the background, and it creates this ominous tone to the action. <laughs> It's like they knew that they were building up to the big fight sequences that the end has without including that normal techno music that we're used to seeing out of this era of film where every fight sequence has Darud Sandstorm playing in the background. <laughs> but they saved that bass drop moment for the very end. At one point, he rips a dude's throat out and throws it at another guy. I mean, you've got to respect that. Coming out in 1998, a year before The Matrix, this film also featured a bullet time moment. Now, obviously, they were working on The Matrix when Blade came out. It's not like the Wachowskis saw Blade and then in six months they were shooting The Matrix. That's just crazy. It's just interesting to see how much of a precursor Blade was to so many Hollywood trends. And I also love that the action scenes really don't have that much slow motion. Wesley Snipes just tears through a bunch of people, 24 frames per second, not slowed down, not sped up. Do that more often, Hollywood. I was really surprised how much I enjoyed Blade still all these years later. Yeah, the villain's a bit cheesy and some of the special effects towards the end don't really hold up anymore, but not only is this a kind of important movie for comic book films in general, it's just a fucking blast. I'm gonna give Blade a B plus. So if you love this, or this, or this, or this, or this, then you can thank Blade for brutally fucking murdering a bunch of vampires before studios ever thought these films would be as successful as they were.